Dot plots are pretty easy to read. They're kind of like a bar graph. Um, let's look at example one. It says a baseball team manager records the number of runs scored by the team in each game for several weeks. Use the data to make a dot plot. So you start with a number line. Um, and that's what they have here. Notice we're counting by, looks like twos, but they're labeling every other mark. Each mark represents one unit. So really, they're counting by ones, and they're labeling every other one. So they're labeling by twos. Um, so every time you see a number, you go put a dot on top of that number. So here's the number one. And they did a dot on number one. I'm going to change color so you can see that. can't even see that. Uh, they put a dot on number one. And then the number three, and they went and put a dot on the three right here. One was next, so they put another dot on the one. And seven was next. There's a dot on the seven. Pretty easy, right? Two. Uh, two. I'm not going to do all of these. Zero, uh, zero, okay? And so when I look at the data, I can see that there were more, um, more, let's see, games that had two runs scored than any of the other ones, okay? But the thing, I mean, you can, you can draw one of these, but it's the analyzing and reflecting on them that we have to be careful about because we have to be good readers and read critically and use those reading skills, um, strategies that we learn in our language and literature class. So number two, it says, how many games did the team play during the season? How can you tell from looking at the dot plot? Well, remember, the plot shows the number of runs scored by the team in each game. So all I have to do is count the dots. Okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, unless I counted wrong. 19. Woo! 19. Did I count wrong? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, how many games did the team score two runs or fewer? Remember, read our graph, runs scored, so two runs or fewer means two and less than two. So all of these right here. So how many dots do you count in this group? In this group right here, this is two, one, and zero. So how many dots are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten dots there. Okay? And then a different baseball team scores the following number of runs in its games. Oh my gosh, that was a loud car. Did y'all hear that? I'm sitting here on Main Street in McAllen, and it's a lot of traffic driving by, especially the loud cars. A different baseball team scores the following number of runs in its games for several weeks. So you have all those numbers, and then we're going to have to make a dot plot. Um, what are we going to count by here? Like, should we even have a zero on there? There's no zeros here. I guess, oop, I guess you can if you want to, but we got to make sure we go all the way up to the biggest number, which is a six. So we can count by ones. If you want to label every other one, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's see if we could count by like this. Um... No, I don't think we can. I'm going to show you what I was thinking. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, I guess we could do that. It wouldn't make sense, really, because you can't have half a run. I mean, they don't count that. But for the sake of space, you could do this. Now, there's a four. Okay. And I'm going to mark them out as I go. And then another four. And then a six, a one, two, four, one, 
to, let me go down a little bit. Oh man, those two ran together. Let me kind of clean that up a little. Two. It's because of my stylus, not because of me. Two, okay. Five, three, another three, a five, a four, and a two. Now, really, you guys, it should be neater than this. All of the ones that go up to two dots should be pretty much e on, on the same line, okay, like equal with each other. You can easily tell which one had the most. Tell how many games a team played and identify the data value with the greatest frequency. So the games, the number of games played was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 games. And then the greatest frequency is four because there's more fours than everything else. Okay, so a dot, I'm just reading right here. A dot plot can give you a visual picture of the spread, center, and shape of a data distribution. You can describe the spread of a data set by identifying the least and greatest values. You can also look for outliers. Remember we talked about outliers in... Uh, when we were taking notes on mean, median, mode, and range, the outliers were like if you had 90s and 80s on your um, dashboards and 100s, and then you made a zero. And we talked about how that zero really brings you down. The zero is a lot far, uh, like a big distance away from the rest of the other numbers. So it was the outlier. Okay? You can describe the center and shape of a data set, I'm right here, in, p in terms of peaks clusters or symmetry. A symmetric distribution has approximately the same number of data values on either side of the center. So um, it says describe the spread, center, and shape of each distribution. Okay, so A is explaining to us that the data values are spread out from 3, okay, this was 3, to 7. 7's right here with no outliers. So there's no numbers that are like way far away from the rest of the picture. The data has a cluster from 3 to 7 with one peak at 5. A peak, think about a mountain peak. All right? If you were climbing this mountain, you would get the peak up here at the top. And that is in the middle and that's called the center of the distribution. The distribution is symmetric. Symmetric is like a butterfly. Okay, if there's a pattern over here, then it's going to be the same pattern on the other side. This is hard to draw with a stylus, okay? Forgive me, but pretend like both sides are the same. That would be symmetrical. Um, numbers that are symmetrical are like the number eight. It's symmetrical because it looks the same on both sides. Oh my gosh, pretend that I split that down perfectly. I swear it is my stylus that is just off. Um, what letters are symmetrical? Hmm, 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 hmm. H. H. H is symmetrical because if you split it down the center, it looks the same on both sides. Okay, so that's symmetry. Look at B. The data values are spread out from 1 to 9. The data value 1 appears to be an outlier. So let's analyze what they're saying. They're spread out from 0 to 9, at uh, 1 to 9. That means that 1 is the smallest number and it goes all the way up to 9. That could be like the age of your brothers and sisters. Ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 brothers and sisters. Okay, maybe cousins. The data value 1 appears to be an outlier. So this number is a lot further away than the rest of the numbers. All the numbers are living up here. All the dots are up here. And then you have this one lonely little number. That's your outlier. The data has a cluster from 6 to 9. Okay, so they're all bunched together. That's a cluster and one peak at nine. So it goes all the way up to nine, and that's the highest it goes, so that's where it peaked. And that's also the greatest value in the data set. It's not symmetrical, okay? And they're all clustered at one end of the distribution. 
Okay. Moving on. Okay, so we're going to find the mean, median, mode, and range of this data right here. Okay, so we did this the other day when we were taking notes on mean, median, mode. Um, let's calculate each row of dots. So if you have one zero, then your value is zero. If you have three ones, then that's one, two, three. The value of that is three. How many twos do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six twos. So six times two is a 12. And then how many, this is the threes. How many threes do you have? One, two, three. And three times three? Nine. And then how many fours? There's two. Two times four is eight. How many sevens do you have? One. Oh, no, that's a five. Sorry. How many fives? One. How many sixes? Oh, my goodness. That's not supposed to be a one. That's supposed to be a what? The value of one five is five. The value of one six is six. The value of one seven is seven. We don't have any eights and no nines, no tens, but we do have an eleven. So what's the value of one eleven? Eleven. Now let's put all these numbers together. Let's add them all up. Zero plus three. Okay, really putting a zero there to add, is that necessary? No, it's not. In fact, I'm just going to take it off because that's silly. Um, 8, 5, 6, 7, 11. So I'm going to pause it while we add. When I added those, I got 61. Okay, now remember when we find the mean, go back to your notes if you can't remember. It's the sum divided by the number of numbers. So you're going to take 61 and divide it by the number of dots that you had. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, <clears throat> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Divide it by 19, and wow, our answer is 3. And about 3.2. There's my proof. I see my answer, but this is the proof. Now, Let's find the median. You can take all the numbers and write them all down and do the rainbow if you want to, or you can do it like this. Subtract one here, one here, one, two, three, one, two, three, um, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, 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 ah, and look what we have left. Look what, didn't have a partner. That 12. Um, two, it's a two. Okay, so two is our median. Huh, look. All right, now to find the range, the biggest value minus the smallest value. The biggest value was 11, the smallest value was zero. 11 minus zero is 11. Okay, the question is, how many runs does the team typically score in a game? All right, so you can say they, it looks like they typically score about two. That's the mode. What are they saying down here? Um, it says the mean number of runs is 3.2. The median is two. Which one would you use to be, like, how much would you say, oh, they score about three. Oh, they score about two. You can't say two and a half because you can't have half. Okay, so let's see what they decide over here. Just kind of depends on you. I would say, I would say by looking at the mode, they usually score two. I definitely wouldn't say, oh, they usually score seven or 11. Nah. Come look at the cluster. Why does that keep moving? Look at your cluster right here. This is about where they score. Okay, so... This is going to be a lot of reading, I'm sure, in your um, dashboard assignment. If you want to go back, boys and girls, and watch any of these math on the spot videos, I'm sure Dr. Berger would be super entertaining for some of you to watch. If you need more clarification, go back and watch him. Okay? Uh, now you need to do dashboard 
um, what is this, 17 point, what was it, 17 point whatever this was, three. Just do your next dashboard assignment.